You are watching Sailor Today TV, your unmissable dose of vitamin C. Uh, MC Hema, you can start the proceedings. Okay, sir. A spectacular morning to one and all present here. I welcome our eminent guest, Captain Ramji Krishnan, sir, the ex CEO of DP World, Captain Pankaj Kapoor, sir, the senior partner of Maritime Law, Captain Vinod Kumar, MS, advocate, Admiralty Bench of Bombay High Court. I proudly welcome you all to this event. Now, I welcome the Vice Principal, Dean and HOD of Nautical Science Department, Captain K. Kartik, sir, and all the faculties and participants to this guest lecture on our abandoned seafarers, the children of a lesser god. Now, with much honor, I call upon Captain K. Kartik, sir, to deliver a few words. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Hema. A very happy morning to one and all. And I welcome you all uh, to this guest lecture about the assistance and the support in times of hardships and distress for a seafarer who is abandoned. Uh, to say that I am delighted uh, this morning would be an understatement because uh, we have with us uh, three eminent speakers who are experts in their own way. Captain Pankaj Kapoor, uh, Captain, uh, Captain uh, Ramji Krishnan and uh, Captain Vinod Kumar. Uh, Captain Ramji Krishnan, sir, I went through your article on the sailor today, Children of a Lesser God. I found it uh, very informative and very interesting. And uh, I loved the quote by the French poet Victor Hugo, which you used at the conclusory part Life, isolation, abandonment and poverty. These are all battlefields which have their own heroes. Obscure heroes who are at times greater than the illustrious one. What a wonderful quote. I truly agree with you, sir. I'm sure today many of the seafarers who are abandoned, they feel distressed because they are not aware of the legal remedies and the protections what the laws, conventions, and the courts offer to them. When I went through your article, I found it so elucidating, very simple, precise, which will be helpful for all the seafarers. The points are so precise and simple. And many interesting things I found where you help us to understand when a seafarer is first considered to be abandoned. And what are all the rights for an abandoned seafarer under uh, IMO or MLC or under the Constitution of India and under Maritime Leon, I found some interesting facts that the seafarer unpaid dues attached to a Maritime Leon will still remain secure even if the ship owner is considered insolvent. And uh, we do get occasional calls from uh, seafarers and some cadets who find birth on board through unscrupulous agents. And by the time they realize they have cheated, uh, they are in uh, some other place, in some other country, and they are totally helpless, and they don't know what to do. So what are all the rights for them, where they can reach out for their help at that moment? All these things are elucidated very nicely, and especially the flow of responsibility between the flag state, port state, and from the country where the seafarer is uh, originating from. So I'm sure that the lecture and speakers uh, the, speed, the lecture by all three of you will be really enlightening. And at this point, I am deeply indebted to recognize uh, Captain Gopal Srinivas, who hinted me that this is an important lecture which we need to have as a webinar, uh, which will be very helpful for all our cadets. We have close to uh, 200 at the moment, and it's still ticking. 
and it, uh, I'm sure it will reach out more than 500. Uh, so it is going to be an eye opener for all of them. And I am also indebted to thank uh, the coordinators, Captain Ravindana, Captain uh, Krishna, and more importantly and primarily, uh, the University Amit Management, the University of uh, the Management of Amit University, our uh, Chancellor Dr. J. Ramachandran, our Vice Chancellor uh, Colonel uh, Dr. J. Tiruvasagam, and uh, Registrar Dr. Jayaprakash Vail, sir. And the entire uh, IT team, which has been working to host this uh, beautiful lecture through the Zoom platform. So once again, I welcome all three of you, sir. We are very keen to look forward to a very informative and interesting lecture. Thank you. Cheers and God bless. Welcome to Amit University. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, I welcome Captain Gobal Srinivas, sir, to introduce our eminent speakers. Good morning, everybody, and uh, good morning to our guests. Uh, uh, first, I will introduce you to Captain Ramji, who is uh, fortunate to have as my batchmate. Uh, one of the odd uh, batchmates of mine who went away from uh, sea and got himself a master's degree in London Business School and is also a Sloan Fellow. He has worked extensively in Europe for the last 10 years, about 10 years in Africa, in UAE and in India. He was with DP World and then with uh, Ballards in uh, Tutigoran. Uh, he's a Master Mariner and has completed the course requirements for Extra Masters and MPhil degree in System Dynamic University of Bergen and Norway. And he writes a lot of articles too, not only in uh, uh, Sailor Today, but in Financial Express also. Uh, he regularly posts me the article. Most of them are bouncers for me, but I read them a lot. Thank you. And uh, Captain Ramji, over to you, sir. Please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, all. And thank you, Captain Karthik, Captain Gopal Srinivas, for having me regularly of Ahmed University, Rami. I hope you can all hear me well. We can, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, thanks for Sailor Today for publishing that article which I wrote. Today's presentation will be primarily focused upon the students and people who want to find the seafarers. And uh, my part of it will be that. And for advanced learners, there are more to come from Captain Vinod Kumar and Captain Pankaj Kapoor. They are lawyers and they will wade you through all the MLCs and maritime liens, etc. More complicated topics. So what I will do is I will start off my presentation with a small video made by Iswan, an NGO. And that gives you a brief flavor of things to come. So if Gopa Srinivas, if you can play that video, I'll be grateful. Uh, just a moment, I'll do that. I'm just sharing the screen now. In the meantime, I would like the audience to listen to the pathos, the desperation of the seafarer oh, and the message he is giving us. I am not able to play your uh, thing right now. Ah. Uh, Captain Sir, you must have got a mail. He has to give you an access. So you are supposed to give me access, Ramji. Alright, then I will just play it from my in just a minute, please. Sorry about this goof up. I'm stopping share. You can go ahead and share. You'll have a share screen open, uh, share screen open in middle, bottom of your screen. Yeah. Click that, and then you will see on. Uh, you'll do again. There will be one more uh, widget coming uh, where your photograph will be there. Click that and then press share. I can't see anything there. I'm sorry. 
I can see only two things: uh, only host of panelists and all panelists. And only so what happens when you say share screen? You will get a lot of widgets. A blue one with your uh, mugshot will be there. You have to click that and then go to the bottom of that uh, widget and hit share. Now you can go ahead, please. Okay, here it is. One minute. I'll have to stop my my screen now. One minute. Are you able to do it? Okay, just a moment. Sorry for that. Give me one minute, please. I'll do that. Give me one minute. I'll come there. Okay, I'll be sharing the screen now. Just give me one minute. I'll play the video now. Thanks. I hope you can see the screen now. Yes. 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 पिछले दो सालों से एक ही जगह पे सेम लोकेशन पे है यहाँ पे हमारे एजेंटों ने हमें कंपनी का नाम भी और ही बताया था और आगे कंपनी और आई जब हमने वो चेक किया तो वो कंपनी 2017 में ही ब्लैक लिस्ट हो गई है तो मतलब एजेंटों ने हमें बहुत चुपड़ी चुपड़ी प्यारी प्यारी बातें की हमारा पैसा भी लिया अभी एजेंटों से पूछते हैं उनके पास कोई भी जवाब नहीं है उन्होंने ब्लॉक कर रखा है तो जो भी मेरा भाई इस वीडियो को देखेगा सी में वो ध्यान रखे कि एजेंटों की चुपड़ी चुपड़ी बातों में ना आए एजेंट बहुत चने की झाड़ में चढ़ा देते हैं दो मिनट में एजेंटों को पैसा देके मतलब बेकार में पैसा देके अपना माँ बाप का पैसा ऐसे एजेंटों को देके ऐसी जगह पे आके अपने जेल जेल से भी बदतर हालात हमें खाना तक नसीब नहीं हो रहा कोई भी आदमी यहाँ पे बिना खाने के बहुत मुश्किल है खाने के लिए हम कितना स्ट्रगल कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे एम टी एस आई टी एफ को हमारी हेल्प कर रहे हैं बहुत मुश्किल हो रहा है उनके लिए भी खाना अरेंज करना हर महीने पिछले पाँच छः महीनों से बहुत स्ट्रगल हो रहा है खाने के लिए न सैलरी है न साइनों पर कंप्लेंट की है पर बहुत बुरा हाल है हमारा नॉन आर पी एस एफ एजेंटों से आए हैं हम तो हमने उन पर ट्रस्ट किया तो ये दिन आज देखने को मिल रहा है अभी तक हमारे पास हमें इतना पता नहीं है कि हमें घर कब जाना है आना आसान है मगर जाना बहुत मुश्किल है तो जो भी इस इस वीडियो को देखेगा भाई वो भरोसा करे इस वीडियो पे एजेंटों पे मत करे क्योंकि उनके पास एक कला होती है आर्ट बात करने का उस आर्ट से बंदा बचता नहीं है जो बच गया वो हमारे तरह नहीं फंसेगा
Yeah, thanks. So uh, I'll have the next slide, please. Yeah, thanks, uh, Gopal. Uh, I hope the audience could listen to the pathos and the desperation in the voice of the seafarer who was talking there. And uh, also the message. And uh, nobody can act that out. I mean, the voice, the desperation in that voice really was what made me really play this video to you all. I wanted it to be understand that how serious this problem is. And as I say in my first uh, line, yes, it is a serious problem. And the resolution always is takes a lot of time. That's mainly because it needs a continuous cooperative and coordinated solution amongst many parties. The many parties who are in this are the ship owner, the seafarer, the unions, ITF, IMO, ILO, flag state, port state, NGOs, media, courts, lawyers. So it takes a huge amount of cooperation and a continuous effort and a coordinated effort from all these parties to resolve a particular particular issue. So it takes a lot of time. So I want people to know that and realize that and keep it in their minds. And astonishingly, there has been a marked increase in cases after 2017 when the MLC came into effect. And that is really sad to know because there has been an increase in number of cases, whereas we are hoping that there would be a decrease. And there is a next one is the is what is pretty important for people to understand, which Captain Karthi highlighted as well. When is a seafarer considered abandoned? Is considered abandoned when a ship owner unit has really severe ties with the seafarer. And how does that happen? That happens because he doesn't fulfill his fundamental obligations, such as timely repatriation, payment of outstanding wages for over two months, and provide adequate food, accommodation, medical care, etc. The trigger in this is two months. If he doesn't pay you for, say, two months, then that is a time you not ought to take note of it and start getting alert, being alert to the early signs of abandonment and take early action. Unfortunately, not many people realize that the trigger is two months and if after two months you have not been paid, then you ought to set things in motion or keep it in mind. So when a master is also left with any financial means, again, that is again a sign of abandonment. Of course, people on board need to realize that a ship owner may be committing a criminal offense when he's doing this. So you are on a relatively strong ground when you push for your own rights. Next slide, please. So what are your rights under MLC? That's the Maritime Labor Convention, which was brought in by IMO. The ships are to carry and display certificates and confirming financial security. As I said between my opening statement, my primary target, primary audience is the students and the seafarers who are sailing out at there, or who are about to join sea, etc. So they ought to know a few things. That's why I put on all these things here. So what does the certificates carry? And what are the liabilities? It displays the owner's liabilities for depreciation of crew and essential needs and up to four months of outstanding wages. This financial security comes from the p and club usually because of each ship owner is supposed to take a thing from financial for financial security. And of course, there are contractual payments for death or long-term disability as well. And what is the information provided in the MLC certificate? These are the informations. The most important one for us to know is the contact details of person in case we get into an abandonment scenario. Next slide, please. So what happens in case of a abandonment? Let us assume that a uh, seafarer has been abandoned. The first choice is always to lie with the employers and union representatives and ITF. Okay. Then you report the abandonment to the joint IMO ILO database. Let me explain this a little bit. IMO and ILO have a database, a joint database. ILO runs it, and whenever a seafarer gets abandoned, he can write into the add it, have his name of the ship, etc., to the ILO database. ILO sends his message to IMO, and IMO does the verification about the ship's number, etc., etc., whether the veracity of the complaint. 
Now, if there is no resolution, if you don't find any resolution after doing all this, then you contact your P&I club, which has issued the financial security certificate. You saw the contact details on the MLC certificate, which is supposed to be displayed on board. If still doesn't happen, then you have to also have to contact Port State, the Flag State, the Embassy, the Consulate, ITF. As I said, there are so many plethora of people, organizations involved in this that you are supposed to inform everybody and uh, alert them of your plight. And there's, of course, a welfare organizations and, of course, a good lawyer. Now, if a shipowner and PNI club fails to repatriate, now what is your remedy? Now, you need to have remedy. So, then it is the obligation of the port state to do so. So, if, sorry, sorry, the obligation of the flag state to do so. Now, if a vessel is not under MLC, what do you do? There are several signatories to MLC, but there are a few who are not. So, what do you do then? And a ship owner does not pay for repatriation, then it is the responsibility of the flag state. And the flag state refuses to do so, then it is the responsibility of the port state or the seafarer's country of origin from where he has joined the ship or wherever he is, or he is from. And what are the rights on unpaid wages and entitlements in India? The Supreme Court of India has in his infinite wisdom has declared it as a, our constitutional right. So the rights to wages for seamen is an integral part of the right to livelihood. So your li right to livelihood is being disrupted. That is why it is inside the constitution and you are entitled to go for a remedy for this. Next slide, please. Now, what is the conclusion? Now, obviously, do not join an unregistered crewing agency to find work. We saw that a desperate seafarer telling us and advising us. And there is nobody better than them, than that gentleman to advise us on this issue. Ensure employment agreement and, and repatriation is signed by both parties and be alert to early signs of abandonment and take early action. As I said earlier, a lot of people apparently do not seem to realize that the two months is a trigger point and that's a bit of a risk in our own. So we need to educate ourselves. We need to be alert to the early signs of abandonment and we need to take early action. We can't let things precipitate. If things start precipitating, then it becomes very tricky, which my colleagues will explain later on, why it becomes tricky later on. Now, ensure the vessel is displayed on board two MLC certificates, which we discussed earlier. As I said earlier, need to take proactive approach. Then there is no need to stay on arrested ship or the country while enforcing a claim. And this is a common misunderstanding with many people that you need to stay on board a ship and continue to enforce your claim. You need, need, need not do that. And continuing to stay on board just adds to anguish and may not get additional remuneration. And this is something important for many seafarers to know as well. Just don't hang on. If things are getting desperate, cut your losses and get the hell out of there. And as a PNI club is supposed to give you for four months of wages, you collect that and get on with your life. So it's a lot better than trying to push your luck and being on board and saying that, okay, I will get my pay or whatever it is. And there is also another reason why you may not get pay, paid. That's basically because you're not rendering, probably not rendering any service anymore after abandonment. So there is possible that you may not get any, any additional remuneration. Now the last one is also a bit, it comes with a string in the tail. And I will explain why it is so. Port state officials have the custody of the vessels and they may want skeleton crew on board. They may want to retain skeleton crew on board. And the local court might declare that, okay, they might want a few people to be on board taking care of the ship. In that case, the arresting party needs to provide the funds. Later on, I will play a video and you can see what went wrong there. Okay, that's a sting in the tail. Even if the court were to say, okay, you stay on board, now you have to be a bit careful here. You have to make sure that there is a provision for funds and that is being implemented because a court can put out an order, but it may not be implemented and that's a bit of a risk. I close it with the next slide and a video. This is a slide which Captain Karthik uh, highlighted. Life, misfortune, isolation, abandonment, and poverty are battlefields which have the hero heroes, obscure heroes, okay? 
who are at times greater than illustrious heroes. It's written by Victor Hugo. The reason for me putting it up is basically there are lots of people who assist these abandoned seafarers who are not well known in uh, real life. There are mission to seafarers, there are ISWAN. They put in a lot of effort to get people out, ITF, the unions, and they don't get paid or anything of that sort. So now we will play the video to see the sting in the tail and you can understand what goes on, what can go wrong. Not this one, it is BBC. Sorry, sorry. All right, that's the end of the slide, please. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. And let me conclude it just quickly. And, uh, unfortunately, the video didn't show what exactly was the issue. The issue was the seafarer was asked to stay on board by the court. The Egyptian court had decreed that let the chief officer stay back. And even after he had volunteered and he had signed off that document without really realizing what exactly it meant. And he stayed on board and he has been on he was on board for nearly three four years without getting paid and without getting any food or whatever it is so he had to really had a big struggle so the that was a string in the tail which i was explaining that even if you have a court order which says there has to be a skeleton crew kindly ensure that you have adequate provisions being made for that so there are three messages which we will go back and repeat the so one is Join only with the recognized RPSL agents, that is a uh, recruiting agents. You can find that in the DG Shipping uh, website who are the recognized people. Be alert to have signs of abandonment. That's two months is a trigger. And third one is the sting in the tail, which I said, even if there is a court lien being in, in enforced, be careful if, when you are the skeleton crew that you are, you are, you are behavior you have adequate provisions which are made for your health and welfare. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Captain Ranji. Hema? All right. Yes, uh, I will go ahead and introduce the uh, next speaker. Uh, we have uh, Captain uh, Pankaj uh, Kapoor, who is a senior partner maritime law Indian Law Officer, LLP, and I thank uh, Ramji for introducing me to him. And he is an ex. In fact, he's, he told me that he is the uh, probably the only seafarer who uh, participated in the Niti Ayo. He's an ex member drafting committee of the National Maritime Policy with the Government of India, Niti Ayo. He is a member of RIS, and he's a Government of India think tank. Okay. He's an 
adjutant professor of law at the OP Jindal School of Law. He's visiting professor of Symbiosis Law University that's in Pune. He's a member of the legal committee of the Company of Master Mariners, India. He's a visiting faculty for logistics management in a prestigious uh, NIMS. Uh, and he's a panelist with the Indian Banking Personal Selection. A person with a, a big profile. And uh, one comment he made is, uh, when we talked was that uh, hardly any Indian seafarers in the uh, maritime law field, you know, and whereas when you go to other countries, you will find that most of the maritime law field, you'll have Indian uh, master mariners and others uh, in the uh, maritime law field. So this is an opportunity for you also going forward when you are looking for a career, you should, most of you should take up maritime law and it's a very good field actually. And over to you, Captain Kapoor, and please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Captain Gopal, for that rather elaborate introduction. Thank you, Captain Karthik, Captain Krishna, and of course, the entire management of Hamid. Uh, Captain Sir, can I have my slide, please? Sure, I'll do that. I think you can see my screen now? Oh, yes, we can. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you very much once again. Uh, good morning to all the students and all the uh, people in the audience. Uh, Captain, uh, the speaker before me had rather very elaborately explained what uh, abandonment means and what is criminalization of seafarers. Just, just wish to add a few things that uh, MLC is rather one of the few uh, tri-party agreements. Why I say tri-party? Because it is the uh, one party to the agreement is the ILO, the other party is the ITF and third is the government of the state. So for, uh, for us, it would be the Indian government. It's one of the very few tri-party agreements and ILO has repeatedly uh, said that the success of MLC is as much a responsibility of the government as it is of the seafarers. To give you an example, if you're walking, if you're going on, uh, driving on the road and you, uh, you speak on, the, on your mobile and the policeman catches you, you just can't say that I was not aware that such a law exists. So ignorance of law is as big a crime as the person who is committing the crime. So as uh, seafarers, you should be aware of your rights and not be ignorant about what your rights are. Later, if you, are, if you land up in a problem, you should be aware what your rights are. And you can't say I was not aware of this right. And that is why ILO passed a statement saying that success of MLC is they have given us the MLC as seafarers. We have got an MLC. But the success of MLC is as much a responsibility of the government as it is of the seafarer himself or herself. Captain Ranji before me has already uh, clear, clarified that uh, once the, does not, uh, the ship owner does not look after you, pay your wages for two months, it triggers off uh, an automatic abandonment. Now, how that happened uh, is what we will go through with our slides. Could we have the next slide, sir? Now, we need to define what is criminalization. Uh, I have checked various law books, and this is the best definition I could find. It says that it can be defined as wrongfully arresting or detaining a seafarer against his or her, or her will for acts for which he or she may not be involved or may be involved unintentionally. For example, uh, if you have been keeping tabs with the media, Few months back, we had an accident of a ship called New Diamond, which caught fire. The boiler caught fire. Then there was a fire in the engine room, which resulted in the ship uh, losing her uh, complete maneuverability. Uh, the ship's crew abandoned the vessel. This happened off the coast of uh, Sri Lanka. Abandoned the vessel. The entire crew was taken uh, 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 to, to Sri Lanka. After a few days, the entire crew was asked to leave was permitted to leave rather, except the master, except the captain. He was held back. Now, this is where the criminalization can be defined. He was held back or he was detained back against his own will for an act in which he was not involved. 
it was not an intentional act it was just a fire in the boiler and they held him back till such time a security had to be paid by the captain himself only then he was released now that is a very very clear example of criminalization of seafarers uh, can we have the next slide sir yeah all right so thank you now as per law as per criminal law i'm sure uh, my panelist captain vinod kumar also uh, will agree with that that any criminal act comprises of two ingredients it has two ingredients i put the latin term there the first ingredient is called actus reus and the second uh, ingredient of a criminal act is called mens rea from the word itself you can understand the meaning actus means action so there has to be a criminal act mens rea from the term you can understand it's the mind that means there has to be an intention to commit a crime there has to be an intention and the crime has to be committed when these two ingredients join together it forms the perfect crime now i may decide on killing somebody but if i don't put it into action it is not a crime so both these ingredients have to join together so i will read what is mentioned in the slide a criminal act as per law books worldwide is defined to mandatorily have two ingredients actus reus and mens rea Now, actus reus effectively means a guilty act. That means an action, a wrong action. So, actus reus is the wrongful deed that comprises the physical component of a crime. Now, whereas mens rea is a guilty mind. That means you must plan it and you must put it into action. So, mens rea refers to the guilty mind and is the mental element of a person's intention to commit a crime, or the knowledge. that once action or lack of action would cause a crime to be committed uh, next slide please yeah so when these two combine they constitute a crime uh, next one please i've given a list of uh, ships where uh, the ships crew had to face criminal action one was uh, motor tanker tosa a uh, vessel was on her way from south korea to thailand master and second officer were arrested Uh, in this the ship was going from south korea to not thailand rather it was singapore and it is alleged that on one night while they were passing the coast of taiwan uh, the taiwanese coast guards surrounded the vessel forced the vessel to uh, head towards taiwan and moment they landed up there the captain and the second officer were arrested it was alleged that they had collided with a taiwanese a fishing boat which resulted in loss of lives of two taiwanese we will discuss this case more in detail uh, in uh, further slides so we'll leave it here another one was uh, coral sea uh, not very long away, uh, ago a croatian captain a croatian chief officer and a filipino boatswain were arrested when 51 kilograms of cocaine were found in a cargo of bananas they were carrying bananas from south america to uh, europe uh the the uh, the shore authorities had information that they had cocaine or drugs on board they raided the vessel and they found 51 kilograms of cocaine without giving it a second thought they arrested the captain the chief officer and the boatswain once again we'll discuss this in detail in a further slides a third one was a ship called erika it was in command of an indian captain captain mathur they had problems with their uh, uh, in bay of biscay the vessel uh, the weather was very bad they developed a crack on the ship side the captain wanted to uh, take the vessel to a port of refuge for carrying out for uh, repairs it was not possible he was not permitted as a result because of bad weather the ship broke into two causing heavy pollution and the first thing and of course like a good master he was the last person to leave the ship moment the crew landed at the shore the first thing the uh, authorities did was arrest him it was very heavily uh, criticized in the world media but we will discuss that once again uh, later the uh, second uh, uh, another vessel was mv uh, motor tanker prestige a similar incident in the bay of biscay she cracked into two resulting in a lot of pollution once again the ship's captain was arrested and a very famous case of motor tanker heavy spirit this vessel was a tanker 
a grain barge came uh, 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 and uh, collided with this uh, vessel tanker. Uh, her uh, uh, tanks, uh, cargo tanks punctured, resulting in oil pollution. And once again, the first thing anybody or any government does is arrest the captain. Uh, once again, the captain was arrested. Now, if you look at the last line, it says all these incidents were termed as criminal by the authorities. Now, I've already defined or told you the basic ingredients of a criminal act. One is you have to have a criminal mind and you must put that mind into action. Now, none of these cases, none of the, these cases, the captain or the chief officer ever had a criminal intention. That means one of the ingredients of a crime or a criminal act is missing. So it is not a perfect crime. Then why? Why are the sailors and seafarers treated as criminals, put into, put behind bars with hardened, with hardcore criminals? Why is that uh, kind of a treatment meted out to us? Can we go to the next slide, sir? Now let us uh, critically dissect a few of them. I've already uh, uh, told you what really happened in the case of uh, motor tanker Tosa. A vessel was on her way from South Korea to Singapore. It was alleged by the Taiwanese authorities that the vessel had collided with a Taiwanese fishing boat, resulting in death of two fishermen. Now, it was a crime which was alleged. It was a collision which was alleged. Now, Taiwanese Coast Guard compelled the vessel to head towards Taiwan where the master and second officer were implicated for the collision and subsequent death of the fishermen. Even, just for example, just for a hypothetical discussion, even if one accepts that there was any collision then, were any of the two ingredients required for a criminal act present? That means an intention to commit a criminal act and put that intention into action. Were any of those ingredients present in this incident? No. So neither the captain or the second officer committed that act intentionally or had any intention of killing the fishermen. Then why were they criminalized and subsequently jailed? Interestingly, they were behind bars for nearly 17 months. And after uh, repeated inquiries, it was uh, the government, Taiwanese government realized that that vessel, that motor tanker Tosa was not, not even present at the location where that collision took place. She was at least 15 to 20 miles away from that location. And they realized that no, Tosa had never collided with that fishing vessel. But imagine the plight of the captain or the second officer. They were behind bars for nearly 17 months. Some of the best periods of their life was lost. And not just lost, it was lost behind bars in company of hardcore criminals. Now, who is going to compensate the captain and the second officer for this? Unfortunately, nobody. Next slide, sir. Coral Sea, the ship set sail from Ecuadorian port of Guaquil, carrying almost 200,000 pallets full of bananas. Now, each pallet has thousands of bananas. You multiply that by 200,000. Probably crores of bananas were loaded on that vessel. Now, initial port of discharge was Italy, but it, the vessel was later diverted for discharge in Greece. Now, as they were unloading the cargo, Greek custom officers boarded the vessel, rummaged the vessel, and they found 52 kilograms of cocaine hidden among the bananas. Now, how can a ship's staff possibly know of the presence of cocaine hidden amongst lakhs of bananas? Yet, the master and chief officer were arrested, found guilty of drug trade, and imprisoned. Now, when you're imprisoned for drug trade, you land up in the company of one of the worst criminals possible. Surprisingly, the same world community which blamed the captain later rewarded the same captain with an award called the Seafarer of the Year. Why? Because after months of investigation, they found that the captain and chief officer were not, were in no way involved uh, uh, with this uh, smuggling of drugs. But by then, the captain had already suffered the worst humiliation by being in captivity with the hardcore criminals. And see the situation of the chief officer, he, he became mentally unstable. He had mental problems after he was released from the prison. So why are we always blamed for something which we never intended? There was no intention. We are simple sailors. It is just that we are 
uh, we we land up in, in the jurisdiction of a country which is not very favorable. Later in the slides, I'll tell you which all laws are applicable to a seafarer. How the case of Erica, another example of making a seafarer a scapegoat, blaming a seafarer for everyone else's mistake. A seafarer is the softest and the easiest target. I have personally known the captain. I have seen him, and I have seen how his health deteriorated literally before my own eyes. Before this incident, he was a good, healthy man of nearly 69, 70 kgs. And after the incident, in just a few years, he had become a skeleton of just 45 kgs. Now, now it's fine, sir. Next slide, sir. Now that compels us to question if. Thank you. Oh, that no, no, was fine. So that compels us to question if any of the incarcerated uh, seafarers were actually hardened criminals, and if not, then why were they treated like one, and why were they kept with hardened criminals? Now, who is going to compensate them for the mental torture and the humiliation? Now, where are the human rights of seafarers? Now, I just want to discuss, uh, 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 share with you uh, with you a small. Uh, information which you must all have now we have all decided to enter the uh, shipping industry in in hindi in hindi we say that share ke muh mein haath to de diya but malum nahi ki kab share will bite so we don't know when that line is going to bite so we should be prepared for it we have already decided we have chosen one of the dif most difficult professions so we have decided to put our hand inside a lion's mouth so we should be ready for it Uh, when it uh, decides to bite so who is going to uh, protect ourselves or ensure us just uh, in case we are held back or or detained in a foreign country just to share with you guys there is a institute called the nautical institute london which for a very small amount of say 100 uh, odd pounds gives you insurance against such kind of eventuality if you land up in a problem they will give you legal cover of up to 1 crore rupees that is a help which is possible if you become member of nautical institute or for a very small amount they give you that insurance yes sir can we go to the next slide this uh, our previous speaker has already discussed uh, another democles sword or something which is hanging always over a seafarer's head is abandonment mlc was held in 2016 and amended again in 2000 uh, in 2006 and amended again in 2016 uh, mlc 2006 articulated that should a ship owner abandon a seafarer it is the insurance company which should pay for the seafarer's wages and repatriation back to the home country unfortunately 2006 did not define what is abandonment and that is the amendment which he got in 2016 so abandonment was subsequently defined under 2016 what was it next slide sir Now, Captain Ramji has already discussed this, but I will have, once again. It is very important. We start, said in the beginning of the lecture, ignorance of law cannot be excused. It is no excuse that I was not aware. So, you, as future sailors and torch bearers of our country, ambassadors of our country, you should be aware of your rights. Captain Ra Ramji has very, 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 very fantastically described that moment. For two months, you are not looked at, and uh, your wages are not paid. that should trigger off uh, uh, that uh, it, it is an abandonment now that was not defined earlier in 2006 but in 2016 it has been very very categorically stated if you are not paid for 2 months it is an automatic abandonment you don't have to wait for anything it is automatic you can approach whatever means captain ramji has already told you uh, you can carry out that process i have been personally involved in helping free of cost pro bono close to 65 sailors to either come back home or to get their wages or uh, other mlc issues and like captain ramji has very very clearly explained to you there is no need for you to stay beyond 2 to 3 months on the ship there is no way you are not going to get it does not mean that if you leave the ship your claim for your wages gets abolished no it does not you should start taking actions in 2 months and under mlc the maximum wages which the insurance company is supposed to pay you is 4 months 
So if you stay on the ship for eight months, nine months, you will still get paid only four months. Very clearly, Captain Ramji has told you, so two months is the trigger. Four months is the maximum wages you can get. Nothing beyond that. Yes, you will get beyond that only if the ship is arrested and sold by the court. Then whatever money is acquired from that sale, your, my, your wages can be covered. But why wait for nine months, ten months? In most of the incidents where I've helped the seafarers, they were on board for 12 months, 15 months. Just two months back, I helped some seafarers from uh, uh, um, uh, Seychelles. They were on board for 11 months without wages. It is, there is no point in staying behind. Let, let me once again stress on what Captain Ramji has said. Two months is the trigger period. Four months is the maximum MLC insurance company is going to pay you. Uh, next slide, sir. Yeah, we have already discussed that. Abandoned ship. Abandonment is one of the most common causes of criminalization. Uh, there are innumerable incidents where ship owner has failed to pay wages or has failed to provide the upkeep of the crew, has or has declared himself bankrupt, thus leaving the seafarers without any money or means to return home from foreign countries, which are number of times very unfriendly. You can imagine yourself uh, uh, lying in a country which is absolutely unfriendly. It's a very difficult thing. Believe me, we helped. We have helped people from countries which did not even know what maritime law is. It's very difficult. So please be careful when you're on the ship. Uh, next. Thank you. So what is the recourse left for seafarers? I think we will skip this because Captain Ramji has already said that. I uh, already informed you. Can we go to the next slide, sir? Thank you. Now, as shipping is a global movement of cargoes, it is very obvious that in the course of a seafarer's employment, he has to move from one country to another. Hence, a seafarer is constantly governed by laws of different countries, both criminal and civil laws. Now, this is rather a difficult scenario if the laws under which a seafarer is governed change with every movement of the ship and the cargo visiting different countries. Now, in order to provide a uniform base to this difficult problem, a convention was held in 1960 called UNCLOS. It was open for signatures in 1980. That was UNCLOS 1. Then we had UNCLOS 2. And now we have UNCLOS 3. It was open for signatures in 1982. And it came in force in 1994. Yeah. So under UNCLOS, Following three countries have jurisdiction over a seafarer. Black state, that means the state uh, with which your ship is registered. If the ship is re has a port of registry as Mumbai, then India is your flag state. Singapore, then Singapore is your flag state. The state to which the seafarer belongs, that means the passport of the country which you hold as Indians, India. And additionally, the state where the ship is located at the time of any incident. So let's say you are in Nigeria when some incident happened, then the jurisdiction, you are also under the jurisdiction of the Nigerian laws. So there are three laws which are applicable at any time. I have purposely brought that article number of UNCLOS because why? Because sometimes you might get arrested in a country where purely out of human right consideration, the government is compelled to provide you with legal help and that lawyer does not know anything. He's just there because of human right reasons. So you can always help him in helping you only if you know the law yourself. And that's why I've brought in this article 230 of UNCLOS, which very clearly says that you can, the only punishment you can give to a seafarer is a monetary. Monetary means you can charge fine, you can impose fine on him, but you cannot arrest a seafarer. Very clearly mentioned, unless unless the seafarer has willfully committed an act which results in pollution, which results in some kind of an incident. And I'm sure no seafarer intentionally causes any damage. So UNCLOS very clearly says that only monetary punishments can be given and not arrest. That article 230, if you read uh, of UNCLOS, you will have, uh, you'll understand more in detail. Uh, next slide, sir. Now, there have been certain uh, amendments to, uh, to MLC uh, in 2019. It's very important for you to know because now we have uh, uh, sailors from different countries. 
so uh, that uh, uh, amendment is now known as harassment and bullying it came in force on 8th january 2019 uh, which says that now seafarers cannot be harassed and bullied when they are on board during the tenure of their duty i've also given you a small case in may 2020 it's a very recent one a master of a crew and crew members of a ship called tomini destiny they claim that they were bullied and harassed by the owners to permit discharge operations in Chittagong, where more than 50 shore workers were employed on board without adequate protection. These guys had gone to Bangladesh. COVID was in full force at that time in May. The workers who came on board for discharge, none of them were wearing gloves or masks or had any uh, sanitizers. So master and the crew, they refused to allow these people to come on board. It became a very, very big affair for nearly eight, seven, eight days. The charging had stopped till the ship owners uh, uh, provided the necessary protection. Only then the master permitted. And this was this, this was a case which we discussed as harassment and bullying. Uh, next one, sir. Next slide. This is another amendment. I will not uh, read the full thing, but I'll just explain to you what it means. It means that. This, is, this has actually come in j just for four months, back in December 2020. Uh, we are going through uh, May, this five, five months ba back it came into force. It says that if a ship is captured by a pirate or an armed robber, if you're held back by a pirate or an armed robber, whatever is your wages, the full wages, not the basic, your full wages will be paid till such time you are in captivity. Now, this was not there earlier. But, if you're, if you're, uh, uh, but, but it has now come into force that if you are held back by a pirate or robber for six months or seven months, you will continue to be paid full, 100% of your wages. So this is amendment which has come in force in December 2020. These are two latest amendments. And as uh, seafarers, you should be aware of this. Next one, sir. I'll uh, conclude now, just to give you uh, a brief of the conclusion. Now, it is essential that national governments implement the guidelines on fair treatment of seafarers in the event of a maritime accident. Accidents and pollutions at sea can arise as a result of circumstances that are beyond a control of the seafarer. But if there is a media storm, you all, uh, you, you all know if there is a pollution, there is a huge media storm. And how does the government suppress that media storm? The easiest way is to arrest the captain. Well, this is what is called criminalization. So we continue reading. But if there is a media storm, then the ship's crew can be the easiest target when public authorities seek to demonstrate that they have taken action. Seafarers have a right to undertake their work without fear of being treated unfairly or even worse, placed in detention without recourse to fair justice and representation. I've told you, you can become members of Nautical Institute. They will provide the cover. So you have legal representation there. It is also important that seafarers are aware of their rights under various rules. You have to be prepared. You have to be well educated of your rights. Only then you can help yourself. Yes, sir. I think that brings us to the end. Thank you so much for, for your patience. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. That was a vivid uh, presentation. Uh, did go through a lot of, uh, uh, maybe it requires more reading. And one thing to all the uh, uh, participants, if you have any questions to ask, please put it on Q&A and we will ask the uh, panelists towards the end of the session. Thank you, Captain Kapoor. Uh, now, uh, introducing Captain uh, Vinod Kumar. He has been practicing as an advocate since February 2009 and is duly qualified as an Indian advocate and an English solicitor. He currently practices before the Admiralty Bench of the Bombay High Court in various practice areas of shipping, such as uh, law of collision, salvage, casualty investigation, ship mortgage, marine insurance, crew wages, carriage of goods by sea, charter party disputes, and maritime arbitration. Uh, Captain Minot has carried out 10 ship arrests in different uh, Admiralty suits. Um, at the Bombay High Court. He is an ex-naval officer um, who retired in the rank of a commander 
He was uh, from the uh, National Defense Academy, Kadakwasla. He did his uh, LLB from Mumbai University uh, from 2004 to 2007 with the first class. He's enrolled as a advocate with the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa and Solicitor, Higher Courts of England and Wales. He's also been a master and a foreign going merchant vessel and an approved as a dynamic position instructor by Nautical Institute London in January 2015. He's also a fellow Indian Council of Arbitration, a maritime arbitrator. Uh, another person with a very good profile and very few of the uh, seafarers who have taken up this uh, profession uh, like Captain Pankaj Kapoor also in India internationally I know there are quite a lot of them uh, over to you uh, Captain uh, Minot Kumar for your uh, presentation I will first share the screen um, to keep your slide ready thank you sir yeah you can come to the slide Sorry on that. Yeah, you can. The uh, wrong one there. Yeah, just a moment. Yeah, you can share that. You can uh, screen share my slides, please. I will do. I'm doing that. I'm doing. Yeah. That. Thank you. I hope you can see your uh, slides, sir. Yeah, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, the topic of my presentation is abandonment of seafarers. But however, uh, this has been very well covered by two very eminent speakers. So I will run through most of it which has been covered by these eminent speakers and will put stress on only those topics uh, which they have not uh, touched upon. Thank you. Uh, you can come to the next slide, sir. Yeah, abandonment is a violation of right of repatriation and payment of wages of seafarers. That's how it is defined under MLC 2006. Now, it is MLC, uh, I mean, there's been amendment to MLC in 2014, which has established a financial support system. So, this is uh, what uh, would uh, come to your aid in case you are abandoned, because this is what uh, would make a an agency such as p and i club provides security even if the owners are not able to pay your wages or pay for your abandon to pay for your repatriation Sorry. now the seafarer is deemed abandoned uh, where the ship owner fails to cover the cost of repatriation or he has left the seafarer without necessary maintenance and he has uh, severed ties with the uh, seafarer without paying the wages for over two months. The other uh, eminent speakers have stressed upon this. This is very important. This is the trigger point is two months. Thank you. Yeah. The normal causes of abandoned bar are either detention of the vessel, arrest of the vessel, bankruptcy of the ship owner or, or damage to a vessel following an accident or uh, incident. Uh, next slide please. Yeah. Now, the, there are other IMO conventions, you know, which uh, ensure protection of human life and security of seafarers, like the STCDW convention, which uh, stresses on the competence of uh, seafarers, and the 2010 Manila Amendment, which uh, stresses on rest hours, and uh, thereby uh, ensuring uh, fatigue management. Unless the seafarer gets sufficient rest, even if he's competent, he will not be able to perform the best and many accidents are caused by fatigue of the seafarers. Uh, the SOLAS convention which stresses on uh, structural integrity, stability, fire safety and under that we also have the ISM code where uh, safety standards uh, are enhanced by incorporating safety culture and documented procedures. We also have the ISPS code on maritime security under SOLAS. The collision regulations, of course, uh, the prevent collisions at sea and load, load line convention prevents overloading. And uh, you have a convention on maritime search and rescue to come to your aid in case you are in some kind of a distress. The, there is a globalization in shipping. I, and in fact, it is because of globalization in shipping that there are enough opportunities for Indian seafarers to serve on board foreign flag vessels, notwithstanding the fact that there aren't uh, uh, enough Indian ships 
to offer jobs for all Indian seafarers. But however, this globalization has also its drawback because the flag state is one country, the port state, the ship may be in a different port, so the port state is another country, the, uh, the, the charterer may be from a different country. So all these uh, complexities arising from globalization has resulted in difficulties in enforcing uh, the seafarers' rights. So IMO has started something called the IMO Member State Audit Scheme, uh, which has been made mandatory from uh, 1st January 2016 in order to achieve the IMO's mission of safe, secure, efficient and sustainable shipping through cooperation. So this would ensure that all registries uh, enforce the, the all the uh, the IMO uh, conventions. They enforce the convention to to have safe ships and uh, to have uh, a secure and efficient uh, uh, running of all uh, vessels. Next slide, please. During this COVID uh, time, IMO created something called uh, a Seafarers Crisis Action Team in order to ensure uh, the prompt uh, signing off of crew who have been at sea for a long time. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. See, many seafarers uh, were not aware of the international uh, labor organization. In fact, the role of international labor organization uh, and their work in the interest of seafarers till the time MLC 2006 was adopted. ILO was formed in 2019, in fact, well before IMO and even before UN. Even uh, you, you, after the First World War, we had uh, the League of Nations and immediately after that, the ILO was formed to develop labor standards, to develop policies and create programs promoting decent work for all men and women. There are 41 ILO conventions and 21 recommendations concerning maritime labor. MLC 2006 is nothing new on maritime labor. It has only consolidated the maritime instrument which were existing then. In fact, MLC 2006 is nothing for more than a single coherent instrument uh, where all the uh, existing standards were put in into one instrument. MSC 2006 in, has also adopted the tacit amendment procedure of IMO convention. This has made any amendment to MLC 2006 very flexible because if 40% of the member countries which represent 40% of the world tonnage do not convey their disagreement any amendment uh, by the majority members of the committee would pass through. Next slide, please. Yeah. See, the MLC 2006 has got the structure as shown on the slide. If you have seen STCW convention, that has also got the same kind of a structure. The mandatory uh, part uh, of the uh, MLC 2006 are its articles. Articles are, are mainly uh, the way legal instrument which you may not need to amend too often. Then you have the regulations which are mandatory and then you have code part A and part B of the code out of which only part A is mandatory, part B is recommendatory. They are basically guidelines uh, for the member states to implement uh, the mandatory part of the MLC uh, 2006. Yeah, this MLC 2006 uh, is applicable to ships navigating internationally, which are above 500 tons. They all need to have a maritime labor certificate and a declaration of maritime labor compliance. The MLC has to be in two parts. The first part is uh, basically uh, uh, addressed uh, by the uh, competent authorities to the ship owner and the part two of DMLC is compliance by the ship owner on part one. An issuance of the maritime labor certificate 
to a ship would indicate compliance with MLC 2006 and that working and living conditions uh, included in DMLC have been verified by an inspection and that it satisfies the requirement of national legislation. Now, there is a joint IMO ILO working group uh, on liability and compensation regarding claim for death, of personal uh, injury and abandonment called the JWG DPIA. So this would also uh, go a long way uh, towards ensuring that seafarers get a compensation whether it be a claim for uh, death, personal injury or abandonment. MSC 2006, as I mentioned before, was amended in 2014, which uh, has uh, resulted in uh, Regulation uh, uh, 2.5 of MLC 2006 having a financial security system. And um, the, in the 2018 uh, amendment to MLC was also covered uh, by uh, Captain Kapoor. This would ensure that you will continue to be paid your uh, wages and that you would be repatriated, you would be entitled to be repatriated even when you are abduct, abducted and held uh, in uh, captivity following a piracy attack. Next slide, please. Yeah, the Seafarers Employment Agreement. You know, um, you would all need to know that a seafarer's employment agreement is a legally enforceable document. Now, this seafarer's employment agreement as defined in the MLC 2006 would include your articles of agreement and also a separate agreement which you enter into with the ship owner. Now, articles of agreement has got a history. That was required when there was a need for a collective bargaining between uh, the master, those days master represented the ship owner and engaged the crew uh, between the master and the seafarers. But these days we have simplified uh, the articles of agreement and we have made it, made articles of agreement also an individual agreement between the ship owner and a seafarer. This has been uh, enforced since 2002 in India. So, what is more important is an, the agreement that you enter with the ship owner. Now, you need to have, before you embark the ship, you must ensure that you must have a properly signed agreement with the ship owner. That agreement, you must have a, either a signed copy. Signed copy means it has to be signed by you and by the ship owner and you must have a copy with you. Law also permits uh, you to enter into an agreement by uh, an email. But in that case, you would need to have, need to show the emails exchange between you and the ship owner to establish that you entered into this agreement. So how would that be possible? You will need to have at least three emails to establish that you entered into an agreement by email. The ship owner should have sent you a blank uh, agreement by an email. You should have taken a printout of that uh, PDF document of that agreement, signed on it, and send it back to the ship owner by another email. And then the referrer should receive that email, take a printout of that agreement, sign on it, and send you back the scanned document of the agreement signed by both the parties. This is very important. Many ship owners these days only resort to entering into agreements by email. So please ensure that you keep copy of these three emails, PDF version of these three emails with you separately to establish that you entered into an agreement with the ship owner. Yeah, this financial support system uh, has been already been covered. Wages to be paid uh, at least every every monthly, and non-payment for two months is abandonment. Uh, if the standard A five point one point five A indicates that it is part of uh, uh, the part A of the code, which is a mandatory part of the code, every ship has to have a complaint procedure. You should know that. 
whom to complain to if you have any grievance so normally in a ship the first complaint procedure is normally the deck department would have uh, the chief engineer uh, to approach for making a complaint and the engine room department would have the chief officer to complain to as a first uh, uh, complaint and subsequently you can raise the level to the master and from the master of course there would be a designated person who is looking after uh, uh, the personnel in the shipping company and then you would have uh, within dg shipping the ddg is who is in charge of the crew branch would be the next uh, higher authority then of course you will have the dg so that way you need to have a complaint procedure recorded in the manuals on board the ship that's very important yeah standard uh, a2.5.2 this is part of the 2014 amendment because vessels to carry a certificate of insurance or the other financial security this is part of the financial security system where uh, the financial security provider is the normally the pni club and the seafarers have a direct access to the pni club so this should be displayed on board the vessel the details of the pni club and you have a direct access to the pni club in case you are not being repatriated or in case uh, you know you are wages are due and you are stuck on board the ship they they need to provide the finances for you to fly back to your hometown the paris mou had observed that in many cases uh, uh, you know the financial uh, support provider have uh, withdrawn Uh, the support because the P and I call money was not by the ship owner, but we'll come subsequently as to how this also can be uh, prevented. Thank. You. Next slide, please. Yeah, ninety-seven uh, uh, ILO member states have ratified MLC two thousand six as on thirty-first August two thousand twenty, which represents ninety-four percent of global shipping tonnage. This is good news. 90 countries have not ratified that is bad news uh, 22 of the 97 states who have ratified mlc have uh, not agreed to the 2014 amendment out of this uh, belize uh, china iran and jordan are some of the major maritime nations who uh, own substantial tonnage so keep this in mind when you join a foreign flag vessel <coughs> the mechanism uh, to secure repatriation wages on mlc 2006 are not complied with if this port states and labor supplying states are not ratified uh, the 2006 uh, mlc <coughs> yeah there are 1.65 million seafarers who sail globally on about 53000 ships so statistically statistically the abandonment of uh, seafarers is negligible nevertheless even a single incident of abandonment is cause of anguish and concern to all of us yeah the abandoned seafarers invoking uh, cifs that is the certificate of insurance or the financial security as a direct to the right to direct claim and uh, limitation of liability means you they are only entitled to give you four months wages so if you stay on board for more you will not get the salary unless uh, you have uh, you enforce certain judicial mechanism such as the arrest of the vessel next slide please yeah this is how uh, it can be ensured you know this that uh, the mlc 2006 uh, endeavors to ensure that uh, seafarers are not left stranded the financial security provider cannot terminate insurance cover prior to the end of the validity period specified in the certificate without 30 days notice to the flag state and the financial security provider is obliged to inform the flag state if financial security is void due to ship owner not paying the pa premium or the p and i call money if uh, the cifs is, is not provided the flags states are required to immediately detain the, their vessel
as seafarers, uh, there are definitely challenges uh, when you try to enforce uh, your right. There is considerable delay in judicial process to resolve the abandonment. There are considerable legal expenses. Access to lawyers may be difficult in different uh, ports away from your uh, uh, home state. The delay in the sale process by banks, even where ships are arrested by courts, uh, would uh, result uh, in you getting your dues very late because due process has to be followed. And um, it's also the fact that the p and insurer may be domiciled elsewhere. But I must uh, uh, un underline here that most of the p and clubs are uh, very reputable and uh, they stand by their committee. Yeah, there are other international uh, conventions uh, which secure the claims of seafarers. Uh, one is the International Convention on Maritime Liens and Mortgages. And then for your, there is this convention, uh, Protection of Workers' Claims, Employees, Employees Insolvency Convention 1972, this ILO Convention 173. And then you have an International Convention on Arrest of the Going Ship 1999. My advice uh, to seafarers would be to avoid delaying repatriation, return home at the earliest uh, opportunity. Claims are best handled by lawyers and in case of need, you must obtain assistance from the Indian Embassy or consulate at the port town. Judicial process is bound to take time all over the world. The Arrest Convention and the Maritime Lien Convention, which I had mentioned in the uh, last to last slide, they have mostly been uh, uh, given legal effect in India by the Admiralty Jurisdiction and Settlement of Maritime Claims Act uh, 2017. Uh, the seafarer has a right to arrest vessel under this act through the High Court, which has jurisdiction of the port or the coast where the vessel is located. So, in case the ship is at Bombay, you can approach the Bombay High Court. It, the ship must be within the territorial waters. That means it must be within 12 nautical miles from the baseline. At the time of arrest, you can the law, you can um, instruct the lawyer, but the lawyer would be able to file the admiralty suit to arrest the vessel only after it is confirmed that the vessel has entered the territorial waters must be a maritime claim. Uh, can you uh, go back to the previous slide, please? Yeah. It must be a ma yeah. Uh, that's oh, sorry. Sorry on that. Yeah, it must be a maritime claim. They, any claim be a master or member of the crew for wages, cost of repatriation or social insurance contribution or maritime claim. So, there is a very wide definition of maritime claim. Earlier, there were a lot of doubts whether the provident fund that the ship owner is uh, paying you would be part of your um, uh, maritime claim. Now, this has been made very clear uh, by this uh, new Admiralty Act of 2017. Next slide, please. Yeah, under Section 11.3 of the Act, if the owner of the demise charterer abandons the vessel after the arrest the high court is is high court is able to auction the vessel and appropriate the proceeding within 45 days of course this is extendable by another 30 days this is a very very fast uh, uh, process of resolution because after abandonment in 45 days the high court can sell the vessel and under section 9 this is very important the wages form part of the maritime lien. Wages of master, officers and other members of the vessel's complement. The vessel's complement is also a very, very wide term. It would include almost everyone on board a ship which is working on board the vessel. So, all this technical definition, whether he is part of the crew, not part of the crew, everything is... Uh, uh, cleared by this definition uh, 
of a maritime lien under section 9 because it says vessels complement in fact i was able to utilize uh, this uh, definition of maritime lien when i arrested a ship in uh, bombay high court uh, on behalf of some divers who were served on board the vessel i could show to the court both gujarat high court and the bombay high court that uh, in view of the, the definition of maritime lien under section 9 even divers who work on board the vessel are part of the vessel's complement and they are also entitled to maritime lien and they can arrest the vessel and what's more important is you just do not have maritime lien for your wages but it has got the highest intercity priority let there be a salver who, who is uh, claiming for his salvage claim Let's say the port trust, which is claiming um, for uh, their own contribution, but your wages would take precedence over those claim. Wages are number one listed as number one amongst all maritime lien. Next slide, please. I think that's done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. That uh, was a another good presentation, sir. Thank you for uh, bringing us to understand what are the rights of the seafarers. I hope there are a lot of takeaways for the uh, participants. Uh, over to you, uh, Sima, to take on further. And there are quite a lot of questions which has come. I think fifteen of them have come. Uh, Sima, if you can read them one by one, uh, sorry, Hema, if you can read them one by one and uh, ask the particular uh, panelists the question. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. A question raised by Cadet S. Akshaya to all respected captains. A fellow seafarer whom I knew had signed for an agreement to a shipping company to work as TME, but on boarding he understood that the ship has no oilers, wipers, and fitters, and he was given the work position as an oiler, though he had signed contract to TME. He met with an accident and signed off within five months, but was paid but was not paid the salary for months that he worked. Can you please tell what could the cadet? has done to avoid this situation the question raised by cadet akshaya it's to all of you uh, can uh, captain pankaj kapoor uh, try to answer that please yeah okay my very first statement when i started the presentation was ignorance of law is not excusable that means the gentleman who is signed as a tme must when he goes on board must work as a tme and if he has been uh, made to work as oiler then he should be aware of his rights and then later if he has a problem he cannot complain so you have to be aware of your rights okay a question raised by anand tripathi if a vessel is arrested for valid reason like smuggling or drug carriage or contraband and see where us are detained is it also abandonment or criminalize criminalization uh he is not uh, said who the question is to so captain pankaj i would uh, trouble you once again i'm Since sorry sir you will have to repeat the question okay. if the vessel is arrested for a valid reason like smuggling or drugs carriage or contraband and see where us are detained is it also abandonment or criminalization Because you talked about it in your uh, presentation, that's why I put it to you, Captain Kamakaj. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Now it is not abandonment because abandonment is very clearly defined in MLC. That means the ship owner. It, it is an abandonment by the ship owner. He has abandoned you. That means he has not paid your wages. He has not paid for your upkeep. So in this case, when the ship is detained for the purpose of in, uh, investigating uh, some uh, drug thing or something, it is not abandonment because ship owner hasn't abandoned you. so uh, uh it cannot be termed as a criminalization because you have 
have been detained for a particular inquiry yes if the ship sails away and you have been detained and for no uh, uh, for no valid reason then you can be a criminalization but no i told you that there are three jurisdictions uh, three countries which have uh, jurisdiction over you one is the country which you have uh, hold the passport other one is the flag state and the third one is the country where your ship is present at that time so they are very much within their rights to carry out an inquiry but if they put any blame on you for something which you have not done then it is criminalization and that was defined in the very first slide which i gave thank you next a question raised by captain sanjay gupta to captain vinod kumar sir how to join delhi high court as admiralty lawyer uh, unfortunately delhi high court does not have admiralty jurisdiction admiralty jurisdiction is only for the high courts of states uh, of the coastal states so uh, you cannot be an admiralty lawyer in delhi high court a question raised by n srinivasan sir uh, question to captain kapoor sir is the insurance covered by nautical institute available to all seafarers example junior deck yes. officers engineers or crew it's available to everyone it's available to everyone junior officers junior engineers senior officers everybody so very small amount 100 to some 100 uh, 140 odd pounds provides you legal cover for up to 1 crore and not only uh, ships officers it is even available to superintendents ashore it's available to anybody yeah all right good Uh, there's a question from Baran Barindran. What is the present state of Captain M. V. Vakasio, who was involved with the oil spill in Mauritius? What help is being provided for the crew of Evergreen vessel after the grounding incident in Suez? Damji, you want to take that? I'm sorry, you have to repeat the question, please. What is the present state of Captain of M. V. Vakasio? Uh, who was involved in the oil spill in Mauritius? This is probably sorry, about our uh, yeah. If you, I'm sorry, I'm not up to date on that particular case. So uh, I followed it up for, for uh, about a month back, and then I stopped following it. Up. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, okay. This uh, Barinan it can be found in the uh, Google website or wherever you can find out the answer for this particular question. A question raised by. Safely to Captain Vinod Kumar sir. As Captain Ramji showed in his second video, that a Syrian seafarer has signed a contract without his knowledge, isn't it a crime to make someone sign a contract with restriction his basic right of freedom? If yes, then why he had been stranded on that vessel for four years? No auction has taken against the one handed him the contract. Yes, yes, you are right. Uh, if You sign on a contract without knowledge of what it says, or without properly understanding, it is definitely not enforceable upon you. But in practice, what happens is, you know, he will have to approach a court and show that he had entered into the contract without knowledge of the contents. So I think the issue is that he is not being able to approach uh, the correct judicial authority, the Egyptian, uh, the right uh, Egyptian court. and uh, due to lack of access to a lawyer or uh, due to not uh, being able to access the syrian consulate or the syrian embassy in egypt and show to the court that this agreement was entered into without understanding the contents thereof thank you a question raised by captain K sorry cadet s akshaya to captain pankaj kapoor sir Requiring a small clarification on actus reus and mens re. If only an actus reus is committed without actual intention, is still taken as a criminal act. Well, it does not come into the actual, uh, the full fledged definition of a criminal act, because you might be, well, let us say, a mentally insane person, or a person under the influence of alcohol. If you instigate that person too much. and as a result or for self protection somebody let's say some a robber enters your house 
and out of self protection you pick up your gun and shoot that robber so you never had any intention of killing him neither you had a criminal mind so we cannot say that uh, even the action was there you did shoot him the action was there but there was no criminal intention and hence it cannot be uh, considered as a perfect crime now it does not come into the definition of a perfect crime thank you a question by captain philip matthews raised to captain pankaj kapoor sir what exactly is the remedy for seafarers who have completed their articles and the owners are unable to relieve them under person circumstances what are the roles of flag state and port state upon reporting i you you are breaking off i couldn't hear your question what exactly is the remedy for seafarers who have completed their articles and the owners are unable to relieve them under person circumstances what are the roles of flag state and port state upon reported i believe this question is uh, in relevance to the present uh, covid situation if this was if there was no covid situation there would be no such uh, que- there would be no such problem because uh, indian owners or indian management companies have a very fine record of relieving people well in time now this problem has arisen in the present times for which nobody is responsible neither the owners nor the management company or the seafarers it is just my appeal in all in all the webinars or seminars in which i speak it's my appeal to everybody to understand the other person's problem same appeal goes to sailors to seafarers to understand the problems of seafarer uh, of the ship owners nobody here is doing it intentionally i i am very more than certain that given the first opportunity every uh, ship owner or every management company will uh, bend all rules to relieve a seafarer so all we can do is pray that uh, the things improve our seafarers are able to save their jobs because none of this is intention thank you all right uh, there are still quite a lot of questions uh, i think i will note them down and uh, get the answer from the panelist and uh, post it out to you all if you can uh, i think that's a better way to go about because we already exceeded our time a lot uh, so i would go on to hema uh, please uh, continue with the proceedings yes sir now i request captain sri krishna sir to deliver the word of thanks and good afternoon one and all i'm privileged to propose this word of thanks uh, on behalf of the nautical science department mit university you can see the background uh, you can see full of ice because it was too hot to handle all these things and uh, i know the panelists uh, would have handled many such cases like this and uh, i would like to thank all the three panelist speakers for giving the insights from different perspective all three are master mariners and uh, with their experiences at sea as well as what they experienced at shore some as lawyers they have given good insight to the young seafarers who are waiting to join the sea in different capacities they are also having a keen eye to see what are all the difficulties they may face how not to encounter and how to overcome them if they do so a very good insight from them they have also given what are the rights uh, what the seafarer should do in case they have to undergo such thing i would like to thank the amat management vice chancellor register for uh, permitting the department to carry out such a wonderful webinar i would like to thank uh, dean nautical science captain karthik convener of this uh, webinar uh, captain gopal srinivas captain ravindranath uh, dr kalpana uh, cadet hema uh, cadet aditya and many more behind the scenes uh, who had uh, taken a uh, lot of uh, effort in conducting this uh, webinar 
I would also like to thank the not Murray and other department faculties who have attended this uh, seminar. Last but not least, uh, dear students, future seafarers of Amat University who have participated with enthusiasm. Thank you one and all. Uh, stay safe. God bless all. Thank you. All right, uh, with this, I declare the uh, meeting closed. Thank you, uh, Captain Pankaj. And Captain Karthik, if you have a few words, uh, thank you, Ramji and Kara, and thank you, Captain Vinod. Yes, sir, I would like to say that I'm uh, delighted, rather, as I said in the beginning. And uh, just to say delighted would be an understatement. The webinar went very well, I guess, actually, indeed. And I would like to thank all the three uh, event speakers for clarifying all the things which we are lingering in our mind. It is a very informative session, sir. Once again, thanks on behalf of Amit University to all three of you for joining us. Thank you. God bless. Cheers. All right. Thank you and bye for now then. We close the uh, session today. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. Sir, shall I end the meeting? So you can stop recording and end the meeting, sir. Yeah, because some feedback from I don't know whether they have filled up or not. I've already posted it. Okay. okay. 65 attendees are still there. They are now okay. Okay. I'll end the session now. Yeah. Maybe you can stop the recording, sir. Okay. Yeah, record stop already. Okay, okay. We'll wait for another two, three minutes, then end it. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. No problem.